Uh, you may be seated. Hold the music. It's been enough now. <laughs> God is good. God is good. I said God is good. I am still a little emotionally taken by the young man. Some things should erase all of your excuses. Some people, are met, Apostle Johnson, they talking about their back hurt, their legs. They only got one kidney left. I don't even think the black church listens anymore. I think we are programmed like AI. That's why I don't hang around a lot of people. It's not because I'm a prophet. I don't want to contract that disease called familiarity, right? It's, it's, I want to keep that when I think of the goodness of Jesus kind of church. Now, I'm going to bore you for a little while, but how I made it through the 116th Holy Convocation, which was an honor, it was over 40,000 people, is in my head, I shrunk them to a storefront church. <laughs> See, you can't be, you, I mean, you just can't let big get you. I have not returned one phone call since I've been there. I've not taken one new appointment. Because there's a disease going around, and that is preaching has become a competition. And I'm not a part of that. The boy said he had cancer in his eyes. Now, I've had cancer before, but not in my eyes and in my membrane. You know, some of y'all got it now and don't know it. Cancer hides out for years before it peeks his head out and be like, hello. We almost lost our former pastor of the church. I passed her for three years. You know, she had stage four. Went down to 90 pounds, then went down to 82 pounds, bones. And God revived her and brought her all the way back. Now, no, no, back in the day, if there was a mother's bench, they'd have been like, hey, hey. But the new church, y'all don't talk till you get a mic. Y'all dangerous. Y'all dangerous. As soon as you get a mic, it's almost like something new hit you. But what if the Lord would have came back in the middle of his song? Hey! Whatever your posture was, that would have been your posture when he came back. I miss giving honor to God to my pastor, assistant pastor, mothers of the church, missionaries, saints, and friends. Thank God for how he woke me up this morning. Come on, started me on my way, clothed in my right mind, the activities of my limbs and the blood <laughs> flowing warm in my veins, and then he saved me. We don't get excited about that no more. Sanctified me. Baptized me and fill me with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and that with a mighty, a mighty burning fire, Bishop Edwards. And then we said, those that know the worth of prayer. Pray my strength in the Lord. And all oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. And now I know. 
He touched me. And he made me whole. I want to acquiesce a little bit so I can give thanks to you because I'm out there. And when I get out there, it's hard for me to come back. But God is a mighty good God. I told the church, I'll be right with you. I told the church in Chicago yesterday. I preached and I think I was a little foolish for doing it. I did two churches back to back. Should not have done it. Because when we get older, we got to sleep more. Y'all don't want to agree. Some of us know each other from way back. And some of us don't look as young as we used to. And I heard three words in Chicago that I'm hearing tonight. Those three words may not move some of you, but to those who move, I teach people around the world, response determines results. Some of you are not blessed because you're too quiet to receive what God has for you. Salvation and everything, even everything God made, began with a spoken word. Closed mouths, grandma say, don't get fed. If you go to any of my services, all of you that know me, I don't wait to get a mic to dance, shout, holler. I'm, I'm going for it. Because I grew up with them old mothers. I, got, I grew up at a church on Legion Street. Y'all know about that. That's in Brooklyn. 89 Legion Street between Sutter and Pickett. It was called St. James Holiness Church. Back then it was the late Mother Kindred. And then Bishop Washington took over, Ernest Washington. My dad was the assistant pastor. I wasn't saved at that church, but that's where I grew up and they didn't let you stay quiet long. If you were talking, they slap you in the back of your head and y'all forgot and they'll move you to the front seat and that's where you didn't want to go. They had Bibles and hymn books on the back of the pew. See, you ten folk talking to me, that means you still got a little Holy Ghost left. The rest of y'all quiet. We know what you waiting on and that is, I see a husband. Me seeing it don't mean you can keep it. What I'm trying to tell you. I can see millions. It don't mean you have the skill set to keep it. You want the men and women of God to speak what you're able to manage. We moved from there and I grew up in the Sabbath church, but they moved us to Roosevelt, Long Island. My father was looking, what, what is he doing? I'm testifying. My father took us to 102 Laurel Avenue, Hempstead, New York, to a church that was first called All Saints Temple. You know it as King's Temple. The late Professor Benny Cummins, the pastor, Dr. Joseph Arnold King. And then we started picking up some oil some of y'all have been in church, but you ain't never struck oil. Touch somebody and tell them, you got to strike oil. Picked up a little oil, because back then they didn't call themselves prophets or prophetess, but they were doing it every Sunday. Touching your land, hands, speaking in tongues, thus saith the Lord, beating tamarines, mothers were spinning a circle. Y'all remember the days when we used to dance and we could close our eyes? Oh, yeah, because they're going to put a circle around you and they're going to and they're going to tell you praise him, praise him, praise him now they'll let you bump your head and scuff your knee and talk about you ain't in the Holy Ghost those were the days when miracles were wrought he's here those were the days when demons trembled 
That was when I used to see blind eyes open on the regular. That's the days when somebody who was highly anointed would probably walk up on that boy and slap him in his head and make his eyes open. Back then, the unexpected took place. Now we using prayer just for God to pay our rent. How low is the prayer? I didn't get saved over there, but I learned to sing over there. King's Temple, we had, I learned the Bible over there. Wasn't saved, but I learned the Bible, learned how to preach. I've always had anointed people in my life since I was a child, grandparents and great-grandparents. But then they moved us to Far Rockaway. Bishop F.D. Washington told my family, y'all have to move. And we want to send you to help Superintendent Howard Kelly in Far Rockaway on Redfern Avenue. See, some of y'all preaching, but we don't know your references, but I know y'all preaching. God called you in the bathroom. See, back in my day, you couldn't do that. And there, Mother Lawrence and Mother Eddings and these people that gathered around me like bloods and crips. They said, you ain't getting out of here tonight. Had me in the back row, I had on an Applejack hat. Y'all don't remember that and you should talk to me because I, I used to play the organ for you and I put on a leather bomber. And I walked in there because I wanted to hear the choir because demons like worship too. Look, I don't know who told y'all, but you better read a little deeper. I, I, uh, they got around me and they did the thing we don't do no more. They said, call Jesus. I've got three of you. I'm almost there now. They said, call Jesus. And I called him with an attitude because I was not ready to be saved. And in the middle of that, one of the mothers took a different route. I'm going to see who talks to me, then I'm coming. And she started saying, the blood of Jesus. And one was saying, call Jesus, the blood. I was like, uh-oh. And I had just finished smoking two spliffs. I ain't lying, I got folk from my church here. Just drank a fifth of Bacardi. How come y'all brag about being saved but won't brag about saved from what? Now we got preachers whose sins are catching up with them, be it old and new, because they should have told it before they got famous. Oh, I ain't laughing. Your mess coming out too late. Saved from what? I had the munchies. I was trying to go down the Mott Avenue and get me two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickle, onions on a sesame seed bun. See, you that ain't never smoked, you tell me, we don't want to hear this. No, no. Some of you are crazy if you had an addiction and sin while sober. In your right mind. Pastor Johnson, thank you for being here and patient, but I uh, walked in and within 30 minutes or so, Mother Eddings and Mother Lotz and a few others, they got me. I was calling Jesus, didn't want to, and the next thing I couldn't stop. And let me tell you how serious it is for three folk who will jump. I was on the floor telling myself, get up. See, some of y'all lie. I was down there like, uh-oh, I said I was never going to act like this. I didn't want to be saved because I didn't like all that slobbing and salivating. And I, I just, it was just a little too much for me. And all of my high, all of the narcotics and the paraphernalia that I had ingested, it just left.
We don't thank God for the right things anymore. Hallelujah. I think we should applaud him for his death, burial, and resurrection and his shed blood. Be seated. I need three more minutes, then I'm there. I can't take off like the rest of your speakers. Grab somebody. I can't do that. That's not me. I um, then started getting introduced in a weird way to what people call me today, which is a prophet. Now, I need y'all to know I've never called myself that. To this day, I found out when y'all told me. See how quiet it is? I was your organist, then prophesied your wife's baby, but I wasn't Prophet Hall. You were calling me Todd. You let me play the organ in the only two keys I could play in. Came 22 and Apostle Johnson opened his church to me. He looked over there and said, I think that's him. No, it ain't think that's me. And he let me be the barefoot prophet for a long time. Left there and went down to AME church that was once in the house. Now it's a huge building. Went down to Robert Lowe's church. Stayed there for 30 some days. See, some of y'all want to hear magic, but you don't want to hear the te testimony. Y'all... Y'all got to stop letting folk touch you without a resume. Now, I'm just trying to help you. That's why you got a good word and then all hell broke loose because the water was clean, but the glass was dirty. Now, you need to understand. So what I'm doing before I do any of this is I'm taking you down a resume. Because there are people up here who actually gave me the opportunity to become who I am. They're sitting in these pews, sanctioning baby testimonies. Do you know how I felt when I prophesied that? And I meant it because I could feel it as today. When you said she can have a baby, you know what I told God? You done messed up. <laughs> See, y'all quiet. Just because you're anointed don't mean you ain't human. I said, Lord, you sure you meant her? Thank you, Jesus. But 30 years later, I was getting off an elevator. See, and this young boy ran over to me. Coming to hear me preach in Philadelphia. He said, uncle. I said, who are you? I want to know which one of my brothers did this. <laughs> And he said, I'm your prophecy. I'm, I'm Eric Jr. It is something that you can speak a word and may not see it till years down the road. Oh, some <laughs> so I went on the search because the gift had me and I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to manage it. Need you to pray for somebody you may know too. Because he's going to have the gift that I have. The name I'm here, it is Etienne. Who's Et Etienne? Come on down. Hurry up. But uh, I, 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 was, um, I was on the search to find out. I was on the search to find out. I'm testifying. You just stay there and wait your turn. I was, I was in the search to find out what this thing was that had me. Everything I'm doing tonight is for a reason, but y'all don't know it. So I got permission from my father, Elder Aaron Hall, who's living, and he said, you be careful on your search. I said, Dad, I got to get out there and find out what profits are. You don't have to act like it ain't your phone. Just go cut it off. <laughs> Reach in your purse, thank you, and cut the phone off. Row four. That's all you got to do is just cut the phone off. Now, I, 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 uh, 
I uh, went on my search and I can hear my father's voice because I've always been raised with parents and grandparents. You know that. And I ran across a man who I hadn't seen no one ever do it except my grandmama and them pastor, which was Apostle Arturo Skinner, which was Apostle Johnson's pastor. So I had never seen stuff like that no more, except when the mothers pray and people fall out. But I'm talking about actual miracles and prophesying. So somebody called me, because I lived in Roosevelt. They said, you need to go down to the Gospel Blessing Center. I said, no, I ain't going down there. They got church every day with some prophets. I'm, I'm, I'm not going down there. That was the late Melvin C. Walker. See, y'all don't want to hear. I got in my little hoopty. I had a hoopty then, and I drove down the block. And I recognize, I'm from Roosevelt, that the cars are packed on the street called Nassau Road. And that, I thought somebody got shot because there are people with their cars running laid out on the floor on Nassau Road because of this man named Prophet Brian Mosley. So I saw a man wearing all white and I got out my car. I said, he ain't real. I said, he can't be real. Ain't, why would God stop traffic? He done ran out the tent. See, some of y'all look at this like it's normal. But everything God uses him to do on myself, you can't. Because it's not normal. Me saying that name, Etienne, scares me. I didn't, I didn't. See, I always take safety measures. I talk to somebody else about somebody. Like y'all do. What is it, Kenny? Come here. June 3rd. All right. I want to talk to you about something. Then I want you to run. I don't want you to turn out being a young man that acts old. You're going to end up like most of these people who I know that are in their 50s, but they look like they're in their 80s because they accepted being old and abused their youth. Your gift is going to be extremely stronger than mine. But I need you to be careful because most folk who get gifts like you possess, I hope nobody get mad at me, and has power like you do, Start off as a man, but don't end up as one. I will look at my hashiando. What? How old are you? 18? Jesus Christ. You're beating my record. I'm going to have you run around the church because older saints should stand and fall out, but young people should exhaust energy and when you run I want your life to be built around running don't ever slow down until it's time how did you do in the 11th grade what's all right don't make me tell it see mm -hmm. we're going to ask God to make you a very educated astute Young preacher, not a YouTube stealing sermons preacher. I want to lay hands on you, but if you ever watch me, anybody knows me, no, I don't lay hands on. Oh, okay, so you do that. You watch me? Go ahead, boy. And listen to me. I'm going to send you to somebody who ain't going to want to do it, but I'm going to send you to Prophet Mosley, right? Reason why I'm not sending you to other gods is not because they're not anointed, but they're not anointed to do what you're going to do. The oil has to fit the individual. If you put the wrong oil in a gas, all right, I don't hear nobody. Ah, yeah. That engine will freeze. I'll be right back with you. Stay there. Oh, he's talking to me. Hey, hey, stand up, preacher, with the glasses. Yeah, that's some property. You, property that God's about to release to you. Don't get caught up every time something comes available that's cheap and believe it's God. Most people that don't understand God, we think God fits our pockets and our budget. But when it's God, it's beyond your reasoning. God's gonna give you two locations, but one is actually for the church, the other one 
is for some type of community business. It's, it's a community plan. Can you receive this? And how old are you? Good. I'm going to let 44 teach 18 what running looks like in a minute, okay? So you're going to run for his generation. He's going to run to our generation. Then you're going to show him how to run. If you ever watch Forrest Gump, see, I'm a teacher. Run, Hey, Cousin James, if you ever seen Forrest Gump, he ran his way into a billionaire. Come on now. He ran, rescued people, ran out of there. Then he owned bubble gum shrimp, shrimp, and two face shrimp, 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 and shrimp. You laughing, but what you own? I mean, the man was a little touched in his brain, but not touched in his run. So God took a lot out of his head and put it in his feet. Your property is going to be released. You're going to have one little issue. Somebody's going to try to say that it's not available and that certain paperwork that they need you to have is not in order. God says, tell you, get all your stuff in order and the person that's fighting you is going to work for you. Do not fire them. You need them to help you get through certain doors. If you believe that, take a run now. And if you're smart, you'll go to Prophet Moses and ask him, will he lay hands on you? Because you're young. And the rest of you will clap and scream to the glory. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The three words I'm ready to preach that I heard in Chicago. I know you all thought I forgot. I'm multitasking. The three words I'm going to say it and only you that need it, your response will determine your results. No music. Because I know how New York is and I love the music. But right now, we need to be pure. 100% pure. When I say these three words, if these three words can assist you in any area, especially if that area is vital right now and severe, it will be your behavior that will determine the magnitude of the blessing. God told me to tell the whole church these words and watch you. Paid in full. In full. Hey. You may be seated. Be seated near someone. I'm about to go to the word. Arakutaba, stay up. Stand up, McGinnis. Now listen, I've been waiting to preach for you. It's not that you haven't called. We just have not been able to connect. I believe the season is here. Because if I take the route that the devil could be offering me, is wait for all the new big doors and pick up the disease I've been trying to avoid all my ministry. When you were screaming, the Lord said this to me about you. Something small, the first 50 that praise God for you, they will get it. God says, tell him, I'm cutting checks from strangers for two properties. Tell him it's paid. God said, I'm paying them off because his heart is right.
just scream across the room and say, paid in full. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Atula Bakasaba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come out real quick. Stand on the floor. Then I'm going to my scripture. What is your first name, Timothy? I want to say to you that when I was praying for yeah, this chief man of God, God quickly through my peripheral, my eyes, he said, look to your left. And I saw you. I see a building, right? This building, though, you may not like I'm going to say it. It needs to be transitional, not like a cathedral. Because God is going to use you to bring in a certain culture, certain group of people that don't look like David's other brothers. Good God. All right, y'all, right, slow now. You have an old oil, but you have a new presence. God wants to mix those two together so that he can bring a generation that right now my generation is losing. Be careful who you let close to you. Can I talk to you? Will y'all talk to me? There's a woman in this area mad. God told me he got a word for me. Not right now, no. No, we don't. And I'm looking right in the direction. We absolutely do not. That's witchcraft. You trying to make God stop doing what he's doing to focus on you? We can't help you. The man's in jail. See, her face changed. But let me talk to you. See, sometimes you got to let it come to you because if you come to it, you catching it before God finish editing what he wants to say to you. Prophecy is nothing but finding treasure in the trash. I promise you that's what it is. We got to find something good to say about you even though you know you're not deserving of what's being said. I find somebody and tell them I heard that loud and clear. Everything God's given you, it's an inheritance. Somebody prayed. Somebody said, I need him to finish this work. I'm going to have you run down the aisle. You can't run down the middle this way. By the time you come back, I want you to ask God for some strange contribution of $2.5 million. I know, I know, I know, I know about it. We're going to ask God to do this like he's about to pay it off even before you buy it. When Pastor Timothy runs, you that have something you need God to do, you're gonna praise God like it's already done. Take your run, enjoy yourself. While you're doing it, just touch somebody and shout paid in full. Young man with the camera, how old are you? You're not going to believe me. Keep on filming me while I'm talking to you. You're getting the word on the job. If you can receive this, two things are going to happen. Number one, God is going to make sure that a license is clear because you're going to need another car because you're going to go to school. The thing, look at him, he like, hold on, do I keep taking the camera or do we... And when I tell you to run, I'm going to ask you to run slow with the camera. 
I want you to own your own business. I want you to be the son that will get your family out of debt. I want you to be the winner that you were born to be. Uh oh, somebody's coming to take your job. So the man that took the camera, did you get married yet? All right, okay, who's holding the camera now? So let's talk to you too. The time has come for your life to become complete. Yeah, see? I think you better take the camera back. Good God Almighty. You've been waiting on this three years. No more scattered pieces. No more moving from one place to the next place. He done quit his job. Church should be fun. Well, at least my kind of church. I got to preach for white people too. I can't keep acting serious like y'all. When I have both of you run, you're going to run for school, license, transportation. You're going to run for family. You're going to run for a new roof over your head. When they run, you that know that they're going to get it, scream and praise God for them move. That's the way we get it. You may be seated. <clears throat> I'm about to preach. I won't preach long because I'm older now. You need a new heart. And it is urgent that you get it tonight. I thank Allah Kuse Bronde. I thank God. You can sit. I thank God for medicines and doctors. Luke was a physician. Because of man's fall, God has given jobs to people that help human beings and sometimes we have to take medication. Everybody healed ain't going to heaven. And everybody sick ain't going to hell. Uh-oh, I didn't hear y'all clap on that, huh? Oh, okay. I'm not concerned about where my body goes. I'm concerned about where my soul shall spend eternity. All the other organs, all the other things that's going on is going on in your body because the heart is overworking. Most things in the body is controlled by the heart. I'm going to ask God between now and 12 midnight. To patatis! To tamahoshia. To put his own new valve in your chest. One that, pro one that uh, literally uh, works like a baby. Naming the leopard dip seven times got up, he had skin like a baby. I'm asking God to put your heart in his most excellent shape. In his best shape, in the best shape it's ever been. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Take a deep breath. That's what the doctor would say. Breathe out. Take one more. Hatanidioshki Mahaya. I expect good news. Get your Bibles, if you will. Hey! Just want to read something. Lady in the middle still mad. Is he finished prophesying? This is not on the flyer.
Now I'm laughing because I don't know what God means, but God says I'm making five people debt free in here and all of you are Haitian. Now I don't know what that is. I wish I was Haitian right now. <laughs> you Haitian? Okay. They all Haitian. Really? Etienne is Haitian. That was your grandson? That's why I was talking to you? Oh, I had no idea. All right, well, we're moving because y'all ain't about to make me. F mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Before I preach and holler to the greatest leader this side of heaven, my friend, my big brother, a mentor, his grace, I don't hear y'all, the honorable Archbishop Eric Figueroa Sr. Thank you. When y'all hear me hoop and holler, the Lord, that's because I heard him at Bible Way. That's the truth. I had never heard no preaching like that when I was 25. I said, I'm going to get you. Amen. Didn't I walk down the aisle of Bible way crying? I'm going to get you. And left New York and didn't come back till I was in North Carolina. Somebody snuck in to Bishop Ford's conference. I was the preacher. Someone in the middle of my hooping, I got nervous. I'm from Brooklyn. Picked me up from behind and I turned around and it was him crying. You got me. You got me. So I thank God. I thank God. Look at somebody and tell them, you look like you need a friend. You just look like you need a friend. Jonah. Talk to me. You don't have to stand. We've been standing, but just please push me. I need 10 of you. Debar, y'all here. Thank you, Overseer Haywood. Jonah chapter 1. Not going to be long. I'm, I'm very serious. Verses 1 through 17. That's the whole chapter. Somebody shout glory. Glory! What is the na nationality of the pastor of this church? Where is he? Is he here? I don't want to bother him, but is he in the building? I just need him to know that God says because of his faithfulness, everything his hands touch shall never have a bill attached to it. Tell him I am adding years on to his life that he might finish one more project. Y'all ain't talking. Hey! Somebody shout one more time, paid in full. Feel some power over there. I do. Anybody that come from a Pentecostal church, I want you to say those three words again, but put a little Pentecostal sound to it and jump up and scream across the room and say, paid in full. Jonah chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1. Yeah. Leave it alone, leave it alone, leave it alone. Verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh. That great city, cry against it for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. He found the ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence. Y'all gonna push me, brothers? Of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his 
lowercase g, God. Cast forth the wares that wear the ship into the sea, lighten the load, but Jonah was going down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast. I got help behind me. Asleep. See, New York got that disease. They don't talk to you, start sweating. Y'all not going to do that to me, but let's come back. But Jonah was going down to the sides of the ship. Tony, he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise! Call upon thy God. If you know the name of your God, please call his name as loud as you can. Some of you didn't call anything. Because you went to being deep, wonderful counselor. No, no. No, he's wonderful, but he gave himself a name. Talk to me, bishops and baby bishops and all kind of bishops. He gave himself a name that is above every name. And that that name, every knee shall bow. Somebody told Jonah, wake up. Call upon thy God just in case he will think upon us and we won't perish. Verse 17, they said, everyone to his fellow come and let us cast lots that we may know whose cause this evil is upon us. Look down your row and ask everyone in your row who's hindering my blessing. Yeah, because if you living right and things are going wrong, you may have to find who to kick off your boat. I'm not going to disgrace my best friend, elect lady Doreen. Hang, hang in there and keep praying for me as you do every week. Then said they unto him, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. Now, verse 8 is what women should do before y'all get married. Let me hook y'all up. If I have any real women in here, shout yes. Before, before you fall in love, use verse 8 on the man and ask him, number one, what job you have. Do you, look at the silly women, eh? do you have a job? Because most of you church ladies looking to be a preacher's wife. You need a man with a job. Jesus never called a disciple who was unemployed. Just remember that. Keep interviewing him like they're interviewing Jonah. The next question was, where you from? Where you live? Next question, women ain't talking is, what's your culture? What's your ethnicity? What country you from? Lord, bless the women that talk to me because I want to bless them. And then you got to ask them like you're down south. Who's your people? Stop talking about we got the same anointing. No, no, no. Who you kidding for? How long you been on your job? Can I see your credit score? Do you live alone? Is that your car? Now, some of the men mad because that's y'all, because that's how y'all living off of the women, but you need a job, homeboy. Verse 9, thank God Jonah has answers. I am a Hebrew. Two, I fear the Lord. Can I get some preachers? One of y'all talking to me? The God of heaven which has made the sea in the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said, why have you done this? For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord. 
Now, I know y'all think I'm crazy, but all you didn't know me know I start off like this, but I'm going to pick it up. But I need your prayers and I need your conversation because some of you go to church to flee the presence of the Lord. The cover up for the real you that nobody knows is you keep going to church. <laughs> you ain't in church because you love church. You're in church because you broke. You're in church because you're sick and need a healing and the vessels that preach this week are anointed. You actually want something from God but won't give nothing to God. When people join my church now, I ask a question. Thanks for that prophecy that I'll have to fast grown church. I received that. But here's what I tell them for one woman and man who will jump up. They say, God sent me to join your church. I said, well, what he sent you to do for me? Because I ain't taking the whole church pulling on me no more. If God sent you, what he sent you with? Y'all ain't talking. See, y'all quiet because... Certain people will come and take from you and then leave and go somewhere else. Pastors need people joining them to help them complete the assignment. Not just for my license and my bishopric papers and what, what in the world? I got help in the back. I ain't got none up front. Why have you done this to us? Be careful, Brother Hall. The sea wrought and was tempestuous. He said unto them, take me up. Cast me forth. I know y'all ain't reading it. I know. Cast me forth into the sea so that the sea will calm down unto you. For I know that for my sake is all of this actually happening. Nevertheless, the men who were sinners serving other gods rode hard to bring it to land because sinners treat saints better than saints treat sinners. All right, I got the sinners didn't give us up that easy. They was like, let's cast lots. We're going to keep trying. But you tongue speakers, y'all give up on people as soon as we have to rebuke you or not agree with you or see it's quiet a bit or say something to them. I'm leaving, the Lord said, my season is up with you. No, you can't take rebuke. Talk to me, don't bobblehead. You don't want people telling you what to do. You're on the ship, but you're not steering the ship. I'm going to prophesy to four of you bishops in a minute. You're going to be glad I did too. The men rode hard to bring it to land, but they could not. The sea roared and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore, they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life. And lay not any of the innocent blood upon us. For, O Lord, we are going to do that which pleaseth thee. So they took up Jonah, cast him into the sea. And once they got rid of Jonah, the sea ceased from her raging. The men feared the Lord exceedingly, offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord, I'm almost done now, had prepared, somebody shout the word prepared, a great fish to swallow up Jonah. I hear some of the deep folk, I've heard this every way it could be preached. Well, hopefully not. Jonah was in the belly of the fish. Three days. Can I get some women to help me? The Bible said, call upon the morning women and three nights. Go to chapter two, verses one and two. Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly. And he said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Then he calls the belly of this fish hell. 
out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Verse 10, and I'm done reading, and I'm sorry that I've bored y'all with extended biblical context. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. The Lord is no longer speaking to Jonah, but the Lord is still speaking. Because when God is not speaking to you about your situation, he's speaking to the situation about you. Come on, don't handle me. Talk to me. Hey there, Bishop Mason. The Lord decides I'm going to talk to the fish. The Lord spake unto the fish. And whatever he said to this mammal, to this fish, for three folk who will talk for the next 10 minutes loud, it started getting sick of Jonah. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. If 30 folk catch this and scream, you'll get it. Your situation is about to get sick of you. Most of the time, we are sick of it. But nothing really happens until it gets sick of you. Sick of being broke. Broke is tired of you being broke. Oh, y'all see, you ain't, I'm, I'm tired of going home alone. Alone is tired of you going home alone. The Lord spake unto the fish and it vomited out Jonah. Pretty word for y'all, regurgitated, but it vomited. Mother Brown couldn't see it. Regurgitated out Jonah upon dry land. Vomited is the word in the King James. Regurgitate is the word that you learn in school. But prophetically, I'm going to say this, and I mean it. Response determines results. Some of you won't move. That's why you're going to stay in the thing. Because you still wait, waiting on a one-on-one -on -one prophecy when yours could be in the text. But let me say this to 50 folk who will scream. After tonight, God's going to tell your situation, throw you up. It's called throw up. We're in a season of throw up. Now you can be bougie, regurgitation. You can be modest and call it vomit or you can just be all the way hood because i'm from 267 osborne street between blake and rockaway apartment 6s 6f went to ps 125 drove the number two train from rockaway y'all ain't talking to me saratoga southern southern utica kingston no strength Got off at Franklin, went down to 689 Sterling Street between Bedford and Franklin, three houses from your church. I've got three topics. May I show you and share them with you? Because you can preach them better than I can. He and I are friends. I'm about 35 minutes from closure, y'all. The topic for the educated people, and I'll see if you scream, is devoured but not digested. Right? I'm looking at somebody and tell them you've been devoured but not digested. The subtopic, Bishop Designate Haywood, is from the thing that you're in trying to finish you off be it that it cannot finish you off the subtopic for those who are prophetic and will scream is I'm sick of you just tell somebody I'm sick of you now practice it it's easy for New Yorkers I'm sick of you the prophetic topic that I'm going to be hooping on when I get there. Hooping's just a part of my preaching style because I'm from an old sanctified church. That's it. I'm going, I'm going to forever do it. But the prophetic topic was based around what God revealed to me in the text 
that this was not a regular sized fish, it was a great fish. It was huge and this particular thing swallowed up Jonah, right? And held him for 72 hours. So from that I get this for the youth and those who will scream longer than five seconds and clap and spin around because it's prophetic. When I leave here, you will say, Biggs got me. You've outgrown average. Y'all ain't talking, you've outgrown simple. Some people like the little you. You better watch yourself. They can't take the you that's expanding. The you that's getting too much exposure. The you that may be outgrowing them. I'm going to stick to my notes because then I know I got 15 minutes of reading. I'm going to use the freedom of my imagination. Be seated, please, and push me. I'm going to use the freedom of my imagination to take a little privilege to bring some things out of this sermon that some of you may have not seen, and if you saw it, you may not have said it. I want us to see things in the text in a way where the whole sermon is prophetic. When I pause, you say, talk to me. Yeah, yeah, I see I got to teach New York how to do it like our parents did. Because our pastor would say, say amen, somebody. And y'all forgot all that. I would also like to point out that what is detaining you and holding you back still has an order from God to make sure you arrive on time. I want y'all to talk of this side won't and tell your neighbor I look late but I'm gonna be on time. We going full speed, I promise you. I... Sean and I, my son and I, we caught a flight from Chicago when we woke up this morning after having no sleep and no voice cause we abused it twice. Now we've learned wisdom, or I have. I don't think his fingers hurt from playing twice, but my throat. We got a text on the phone because of my status with the airline that I fly. It says, flight is delayed. I was about to call you because I'm your brother, brother, and I was going to tell you, man, it's better for me to go home because my flight is not direct. I'm preaching, y'all. <laughs> If y'all talk, I'll prophesy. My flight, they didn't have a direct flight on this airline because when you fly certain airlines, you must lay over at their hub. <laughs> Timothy, I see you over there. First thing I ever told you about preaching was read books and you did it and conquered it. I'm telling you, listen to me. I, 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 I. Sean looked, it said, we're leaving an hour later. Then it came back and said, we're leaving an hour and a half later. So we looked at the first flight, delayed. The second flight had not changed. So there was no way that if the first flight didn't get there on time, that we would make the second flight. So because the airline, am I confusing y'all? Because the airline didn't give us a new time for the second flight, there mean there was no more flights. So that was translating to me, we not gonna make it. Like your little credit score, if you look at it while you go for a house, that credit score basically tells some of you, you ain't going to get it. Oh, all y'all going to act like you got a good beacon score up in here? My son Sean said, what we going to do? I said, we going to get on the flight because I know him. If I go home... And you would have had a preacher. Prophet Moses was here. You had good backup. You didn't have to do that. I could have went home. No, 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 no. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And we got to Detroit. That's where the layover was. The pilot said to us when we got on the delayed flight, and so did the man at the desk who wore a gray jacket, which means he's a man of more authority than the one that has on the blue jacket. 
See, y'all don't know nothing. Each level at the airline has authority. Blue jacket can give you a little help. Gray jacket gives a little more information, but the purple jacket has a little more power, but the red jacket can make things change. Oh, yeah. Y'all know some of you are blue jackets. You ain't no bishop, ain't no prophet. Some of you gray, some of you purple, and some of you red. Y'all understand, when you really need a word from the Lord, you got to know what jacket to go to. Now, that's all I'm going to tell you. We let Etienne have a legacy. Etienne's going to say, one of my favorite prophets, Prophet Hall, prophesied to me, and one of the most anointed ones prayed for me. That will be in his repertoire forever. He'll have a reason not to error. The man told me, after he told Sean, y'all not going to make it, it's going to be close. He looked at it. I told Sean when we get to Detroit, if we can't make it, I'm going to call him because my next flight going home is next door to the gate we getting off of. I said, now you get home the best way you can. Y'all quiet. He grown. 40 years old. Get home. See, some of y'all laughing, but that's why you ain't made it because you care about somebody a little too much. You missing where you got to go trying to help them get where they need to go. How does that work? I told him, you grown. Get on home. We get on the flight. The pilot says these words to me for those who will jump up again because response determines results. He says, even though we're late, you that have close connections, do not worry about it because we're going to make up the time in the air. Yeah, we're going to make up the time. And then I asked the pilot, because I was in first class, I said, come here. One of the pilots came, we want to thank you for being a so-and-so member and whatever mileage I had. I just wanted to come shake your hand and tell you we're sorry for the two-hour delay, but we'll make it up. What flight are you on? I told him. He said, you're going to catch it. I said, thank you. Then he told me when I announced that we're going to make up for it in the air, he said, I can only announce it. I'm going to see if somebody scream, because the wind shifted. Now, when the wind shifted. And God said, tell some of you that was late, I've got wind in your favor. We're about to make up for lost time. We look late, but we're going to arrive on time. He's an on-time God. Come on, talk to me. Yes, he is. Job said, he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there. Right on time, because... He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God gives the assignment to Jonah. Jonah does not like the assignment. Can I get some honest, some mature, honest people to talk to me? Have you ever been told by God to do something and you didn't want to do it? Come on, talk about it. There are people I've had to prophesy to that I didn't even want to talk to. I was like, oh. Lord, find somebody else. When you're really chosen of God, he will test your character. I see what's wrong with New York. Y'all still got that church wave thing waiting on the hoop, but you better talk while you can. He didn't like the assignment. He told God yes to Nineveh. But when he gets down to the port, gets to the ticket counter, I wish I had, he whispers to the man, ticket to Tosh. As if God can't hear him, man. Excuse me, sir. Shh. Take it to Tosh. 
the man probably should have told him this for my 10 folk who will jump. The ticket was paid for if you go where God tell you. Uh oh, it's quiet. But if you're trying to buy a new ticket, you got to pay for it yourself. I want to scream to you, scream to God. God's will, God's bill. Now, I do want y'all to know that. But when you decide to step out of the will of God, at that time, it becomes your bill. Come on, say to your neighbor who might be Jonah, God's will, God's bill. Some of us are paying for a decision we made. Come on, talk to me on this side. Not Prophet Moses, but the rest of you. We forged the name of Jesus on something he had nothing to do with. You said God said that was your husband. Why didn't it work? Oh, because he changed. No, no, no. That, who's looking? That is not the way this works. Let me talk to mature folk who are trying to live right. When you got married, you said for better? That's what you said. Richer, poor, sickness, health. Look at all the folk that got a divorce looking mad. I'm divorced. Smile. My wife from here. Smile. To death do us part. Somebody has to stay the course. Who told you that when God puts a marriage together, nothing goes wrong? You better ask Adam and Eve. Good God Almighty. That's the only marriage I see him ever performing himself. And if she wasn't talking to a serpent, my name ain't Todd Hall. And if he didn't eat knowing he wanted to, my... All right, let me get out of here. See, y'all lie. He was not beguiled. She was. He volunteered. I wanted it anyway. But I needed somebody to blame. Some of you made a decision to do what you're doing, then you found someone to blame it on. You know you wanted to do that. Can I get some honesty? Let me ask the young people to say amen because my saints ain't going to say nothing because they living in a delusionary state like I'm old now. You didn't get delivered, you aged out. I'm talking about people who understand we made some terrible decisions and they came with a high price. A great preacher, Bishop Hughes, a great preacher called me last week, cannot say his name, nor will I allude to who it is unless God showed you himself. And he said, I want you to come preach at my church. Now, I've been wanting to, in my heart, preach at this church for at least 15 years. And I was like, good God Almighty, I'm going to this church. Yay, God. Thank you all for smiling. Yay, God. And I hung the phone up, giving him an attentive date. Then the Lord opened up his understanding to me and said, you cannot go. I was like, why is thou Lord? <laughs> I, I said, I've been waiting 15 years to be this man's friend, to rub shoulders with him. He's a giant in the kingdom of God. Lord. This is the level that I seeth myself in. Y'all laughing, but laughter is a medicine. All you that look mean, that's why you're sick. I'm telling you now. You gotta... A merry heart doth good like a medicine. I said, I, I want to go. Then the Lord revealed to me 
these words, and if one of you jump, you, you will be dead free and three of you. He said, he's bringing you while he's hot. He never liked you, but you're necessary now. Do you want to waste time with Jonah or stay on track? Let me say this to women who will scream and to all of the daughters of God and mothers in Zion who will scream, may God bless you by tomorrow. And that's this. You know when your future's ready, when your past wants you back. This is very important that you understand people don't show up till you are about to go up. There's a reason for their reappearance. E flat, let me hear it. All right, I'm almost ready. Mm, that's good key. Please be seated. There are things from your yesterday showing up today so that your tomorrow looks the same. You gonna help me preach here tonight. I'm gonna pass you the mic. Jonah paid for this ticket. Got three levels left, Bishop, then you're done. As soon as Jonah gets a ticket going to Nineveh, I mean, uh, Tarshish instead of Nineveh, not only does his direction change, but so does the climate. You missed that too. When things out of nowhere start shifting on you, you need to go back and find out when it started. Who was I hanging with when this happened? Oh, this I don't want to talk. Who? See, some of you won't manage your journey. Because you were fine when you were by yourself. But as soon as you start letting people in your inner circle, things started shifting. I wish I could talk to talkers. And your problem is you've got too good of a heart to cut people off because you know what it feels like to be cut off yourself. But the problem is the people you need to cut off was not as integral as you are. Their motive was to get you off track. Not only uh, uh, Dr. Green does, he changed directions and then the wind shifts and now he gets wind coming against him that makes it hard for them to get where they need to go on time. But he also affects everybody's life in the boat. Let me just read this and let y'all go because... Uh, on this next statement, if preachers don't catch it, I don't know what's wrong with the people, but that's this. The problem is no longer what we're doing, it's who we're doing. Look at everybody got slow. Everybody went sexual. Y'all need prayer. they threw overboard I want to modernize it all the cocaine because they're going to Tasha's overboard all the bags of weed I know y'all act saying I threw them overboard even prescription they threw them overboard the Louis Vuitton and the Fendi's and the Gucci's Dooney Burks Prada's overboard that's because these sinners knew, I'm a preach, that before they sailed, they had already checked the weather. Yes, sir. And the weather for their trip said smooth sailing. So they're not saved, they don't serve God, but they're smart enough even as sinners to say, something's wrong. Oh, yo, come on, I wish somebody would catch that and just look at somebody and tell them something's wrong. Just go and tell them. Now, if the person near you not talking, I'm going to prove to you in three minutes, that's your Jonah. 
They rode in your car, never give gas, go eat, never got money, always say I'll pay you back. That's your Jonah right there. Drove with you in your car, dressed with thousands of dollars worth of clothes, still owe you 300, won't pay you back. Got on $1,800 worth of weed, but ain't got no money in their pocket. That's your Jonah. Always making it off your ticket. Freeloaders. They don't show up when you need money, but when they get a check. So I had a dream that God blessed you. Perfect timing. When they threw everything overboard, Bishop Shelvis, Vice, their common sense said, and we're almost at the cross. We done threw everything over, so it's not a what. It's a who. If your fellowship, this is just an analogy, is not growing as it should at the age that I know you are, it is a who. It is a who. When you're up preaching and God uses you and you start dancing, peruse your audience and those who have your license and if they're sitting texting on the phone, that's who it is. Is the person that got on your ship, fellowship, y'all hear me, to get somewhere off of you, and when they get there, they don't plan on going back because Tasha's was their original trip. I had 28 churches last week. Last month I lost one again because I'm, you know me, I mean, I'm crazy. And, and I believe that if I'm up preaching or dancing and the Lord is moving, if you are my subordinate, what are you sitting in the pulpit looking like you disconnected? Oh, y'all cry, I don't care who mad at me. He need to get out of here, this New York. I'm from here, you better check my record. You don't join anything and be contrary to what you're joining. Let me talk to talkers. When God sends you somewhere, you should make that journey smooth sailing. I got eight or nine people in here who know me personally, some whose life I have benefited, some who I've poured into, and since I've been up preaching and prophesying, three of them have not moved, said amen or anything. When they text me tonight, I want them to read my response. Don't you ever act like you bigger than me. And I mean not ever. See, when it gets to your head, big got you. All of us know how crazy some of us look with big titles, with five members. Y'all know how we look, don't you? Bragging about your titles and consecrations and when we watch you on Facebook, the camera gotta stay on you. Cause ain't nobody bought a ticket for your trip. Why? Cause they see how you act towards other people. Mm. E flat. Mm -hmm. That's the only way we gonna get out of this alive. 
major decision has to be made. Look at somebody and ask them, what is that decision? That is, who do you have to get rid of? Who's got to go? Now let me go back to a 1960s song or a little cli cli cliche that I used to hear my great grandmama saying people who really loved God and was real sanctified. And when I started, the 30 folk that jumped, Lord bless them. If my mother don't go, y'all don't remember. If my father don't go, See, some of y'all can't get blessed because you're trying to take folk you love with you. But do they love you enough to want to go? We used to sing the song, I ain't going to let nobody. Oh, y'all still remember that. We're about to get to this hoop now. Remember these next two sentences, senior bishop, then call me, rebuke me, and if I did wrong, keep the money. If I did right, add some to it. <laughs> Remember this for my 30-member church. Jonah isn't a false prophet. He's a true prophet headed in a false direction. <sighs> See, you that are talking, we're going to get there. We're going to make up time in the air. But the rest of y'all quiet, you're contrary. This is not a sermon about sin holding saints back. It's a sermon about saints holding sinners back. Uh oh, you got quiet. Reason why the church ain't filled with sinners is they know how you living and they ain't trying to go out like that. We are acting just like them. Y'all ain't dressed like Nineveh, you're dressed like Tarsius. They don't hear you speaking in tongues on the corner, they hear you cussing with them. Why are y'all bobbleheading? Y'all remind me of that little dog on, on, on our dashboard in the car. You touch the head. Death and life's in the power of your tongue. Talk so we know what you feel. We can't judge emotion, but we can judge your words. There must be a difference, I'm preaching, in holy and unholy. You ain't got to say amen. You heard enough of this last night. Righteousness and unrighteousness. Filthy and clean. When I hang around my secular friends, secular is not R&B, it means people with jobs that ain't saved. That's secular. People that have jobs responsibilities, benefits. They just have not been properly introduced to Jesus because we have become an improper introduction. Okay. So no, I don't go to church. I watch online. That's because they hear church folks saying, I don't go to church no more. I watch online. Now let me say this for three folk who will scream and I mean scream loud and I promise you debt free. They don't go to the bar online. How you serve God online when he has a building that's erected unto his name but when you sin you've got to go to the premises. And this is the only place you can come to for free. Yeah. Buffet costs money. Movie costs money. All kind of sinful things cost money. Wages of sin. Salvation's free. We're about to go to church. We're going to be in E flat. He's a... He's a true prophet headed in the false direction. 
So now while he's headed in the wrong direction, this is where we are before we ease into that AME hoop, then that Baptist, then that Kojic holler, and we headed home. God decides I can't speak with him while he's headed in the wrong direction. I'm going to pass you I'm going to separately I'm sorry. I'm going to separate myself from him. But I'm going to leave him and hold a meeting with something about him. And he doesn't have to go far for one screaming man. I'm going to talk to where his help is. Is not far from him because the boat and what's going to hold him is in the same vicinity. Uh -oh. Thank you, the boat is riding the water but what's going to hold Jonah lives underwater God commands what knows the water surface the whale comes up God becomes Aquaman y'all know see how the saints got deep who's that forget it God Stanley, I see God becomes Aquaman and he tells the fish, I've got someone who's a little out of order right now. I, I need you to help me get who I love back in order. Now, I also... I can need you to make sure that he gets where he needs to be on time. He also, good God, tells this mammal, who you're about to hold for me, you're going to get sick of. Because I feel God. I want you to devour him but I can't let you let him run through your system oh good God right now oh I got three people out of everybody and when you eat something that does not agree with your system Sometimes, most of the time, that thing does not go through the digestive tract. E flat again. Yeah, I don't know if I'm coming that low because I feel good right now. But your system is so magnificently orchestrated and constructed that instead of making it go through the system, it makes it come back out the same way it went in. I want you to grab somebody if they look friendly and tell them we coming out of this, I promise you. And tell them we gonna be on time. Just grab somebody, we almost there, and tell somebody he may not come when you want him. Mm -hmm. But he's always on time. All right, Sean, get up off me. It has been proven next time we're staying there that the esophagus and the throat of a whale cannot swallow a human being. Why y'all standing not talking? Hey, Dub, why y'all standing like that? But there's a word in the text that changes the dynamics of the ability of this whale. Now, if I say this and 30 of y'all don't scream, then I failed and that's fine. But that is, you're gonna be able 
to do something you never did if God prepares you. Wow! Yeah, though I walk. Don't push too hard through the valley. Relax yourself of the shadow of death. Get somebody's hand and make sure that ain't Jonah and talk to them like you're trying to get them out of something and say, though I walk through the valley, if they ain't screaming, let them go, I'm telling you, of the shadow of death. We'll fear no evil For thou Art with me Your rod And your staff They comfort me Thou preparest Y'all already rocking my boat But don't tip it over Find somebody that'll preach A table for me in the presence of mine enemies Then thou anointest my head with oil And my cup Y'all preaching up here, run it over Charlotte Come on New York, Queens, Bronx, Five Barrows Let's scream like we used to run things Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Y'all done left me, I'm preaching by myself. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? How long? Grab another neighbor by the hand. Look at and say neighbor I must admit tonight I was a little delayed even felt stuck even a little angry about where my life is but by tomorrow tonight throw them overboard and let them know I love you but you're holding me back but find somebody that's excited about your journey who knows that in 24 hours God's gonna turn it around get them by the hand and look them in the face like you're serious and say
tell somebody. Hey. Just tell two or three people it's all right now. You that are not prophetic, don't get offended. I'm prophetic. Jonah is a prophet. Few people in here are truly prophets. But I want you to say this to your neighbor and just watch their behavior. Come on, become a behaviorist. Watch the person who you're talking to. And just tell the person with power by tomorrow. We're closing, we're closing, and thank you for your kindness. Thank you for making me feel at home again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You ought to tell him, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is here. You better learn how to treat him. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will, to your way. I'll say yes. I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me. Hallelujah. With my whole heart, I'll agree. My answer is yes. Somebody ought to scream that word as loud as you can. Yes. Yes. My answer is yes. My answer is yes. Hold one person's hand, not multiples, and listen to how I close this. This is not offering, I promise that. I have to close with an understanding. Dr. Lowe, catch this. Dr. Mosley can fix this. If it comes out wrong, I count him as a theologian and a biblicist in a real way. Very few people do I say that of. But Dr. Law was talking to you. I'm going to make a bold statement. The sticker la kushima. The statement is this for 10 of you with a mouth. If Jonah didn't pray to God and praise within 72 hours, he would have been digested. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You've got a limited amount of time to change your direction. I'm gonna say it again. God held a meeting with the fish and said, listen, this boy I like that. This boy has 72 hours to fix what he broke. If, look at me, don't look at no friend. If he does not get his life back in line, finish him. 
let your juices and gastric juices let it dissolve him and let him run through your system and let the sea be his place of living he said but you'll know when to give him up and here is where I'm going to test 200 out of all of you you will get sick if he talks to me in your situation next time we hear Jonah talking is in the belly of hell he says God you are mighty look at me and when he starts talking to God the whale oh y'all the whale st starts feeling uneasy then he started saying thank you Jesus and the whale hold on you missed one last thing we ain't got enough screamers over here not only did the whale get sick but the whale turned around and headed towards dry land yes, the whale now is going in an opposite direction of a whale the whale is going out of his way to put Jonah in the way When whales swim the dry land, they get stuck and die and need help to turn around. Gets him, look at me, to a place of dry land and he throws him up. Regurgitate, vomit it, loosen, let him go. When he's on dry land, scripture says with 30 seconds, he makes a three-day journey. Oh, y'all miss in one day. The whale drops him off where he can take a shortcut and make it to a place on time that he was too late to get to. Last thing I want to say is you're holding the right person's hand because if not, you should have let them go by now. Because that's why I don't touch or lay hands on people much. Because if I feel the spirit, I'm going to tell you something wrong with you. So I don't want to insult you. I just don't touch you. Some of us have come too far to start over. Too old to even start. I can't start over. Look at me, Bishop Haywood, Bishop Green Jr., Bishop Mason, Bishop Edwards, all of you that I know by name, Mother Brown, Javesse, all y'all who think that because I go higher, because I don't have time to talk to y'all no more that I'm important. No, I'm busy. That's the bottom line. Busy is not approachable that easy. I'm just busy. But I don't call all y'all's name that done fed me pie, chitlins, cake, everything you done did. Barred your car. I'm done with that. The world, souls are being lost. Us tripping on something from yesterday. When tomorrow is where the promise is. I ain't got time to talk about yesterday. You can tell when folk don't want you to be blessed and don't like that you're being blessed, they always bring up, do you remember? I don't want to think backwards to feel good. Can't somebody feel good thinking forward? As you're holding that hand, here it goes. Now, the last thing I'm going to tell you, I didn't tell y'all stand, not all of you. If you're old and want to sit, feel good. But if you got Something in you that'll make you stand, God might give you two new knees and a hip. That's what he used to do. You come in in a wheelchair on crutches and the wheelchair goes on the wall. That used to be our miracle pictures, your canes. Now you cover the cane with your clothes. Y'all stay with me. 
Here's the last thing I want to say. And if you catch this and 100 of you scream young and old, I will feel that I've done the will of God. And that's this, Bishop. Bishop, the next time people see you and I, it is great to have people talk about how messy you are. I want you to bring up my mess. We going home now. Tell them what you heard. Look at some of y'all. I know some things about him that only I know. No, no, don't hold it. Tell it. Look at the other scarecrow. He don't really mean that. Yeah, I do. Watch. Once they bring up the mess. Can I rename it? We're closing. Once they talk about your vomit. You will have the final word. Boy, this... This section still hard. The final word will be for those who will scream loud. My mess is gone public, but this mess is a sign that I just came out of something. This is not a mess that I got into. This is a sign that I've come out of it. And when people bring up your past, they are actually, actually congratulating the things you survived. They don't know how to compliment you. Shake a neighbor's hand and tell them congratulations on surviving the worst season of your life. Don't let that hand go. Hold on to him. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the fields. We're blessed when we come. And when we go, we cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. Don't play yet, for the devil is defeated. Come on, testify. I want to say this. I know y'all don't like the lyrics, but I knew what the mothers meant. Lord, don't move my mountain. But give me the strength to climb. Lord, don't take away my stumbling block. Come on, help me. Believe me. Lord, I don't bother nobody. I try to treat everybody the same. But every time I turn my back, they scandalize my name. You're holding the hand of a warrior. I wrote on my notes, Archbishop, you can call me in an hour. I'll be in bed watching Netflix or they'll be watching me. As I'm older, yeah, wake me up softly. But listen to me, look at me. In my notes, it says what God allowed to hold Jonah was the season called big. People would have killed you, but they were too small to swallow you. The issue is, <laughs> y'all stop fighting little goldfish. You're going through what you're going through because something big got you. So stop giving little so much of your attention. I'm going to always have enemies. See, you have to accept that. 
I'm going to always have one or two family members in my family that's jealous of me for no reason. I'm going to always hear I've got eight children out of wedlock when I don't at all. I've heard a lot of things about me, but the way I became known was through the things you heard. Don't drown in the wave, ride it. Good car right now. I surf on this foolishness. I wish I would have learned that lesson when I was younger. I did too much kicking and trying to prove and make folk like me, and it exhausted me. Some of you are not going to scream on this. This is a corporate prophecy. Then I should do something small, but look at me like you're strong. And that is, there are going to be a lot of people after 12 midnight who's going to try to come back to your life, family, friends, say sorry out of nowhere. The Lord says, accept the apology, don't accept them. But I want to say one more thing. I want to say one more thing. Because I'm open for apologies. I'm not open for new friends. I'm just open for apologies. Because now you've outgrown the need for so much socialization, right? I don't go to diners with a bunch of church folk at night. Just ain't that much eating in the world. But catch me. What God's about to do for some of you that are listening and really listening and the sermon means more to you than just a good sermon he says, the reason why people are going to come back into your life and apologize is not just because of him, God. He said, because now you've graduated to where now you are necessary. Now, what you do with your necessity is your business. I recognize I'm preaching all over the world for folk who still don't like me. I'm just needed. So I charge my enemies full price and my friends discount. That's just the way this works. Now, if y'all don't understand that, that's why we friends. I've never given you an honor honorarium. Never got the tickets in advance because you're my friend. But there's a group of them. No, no, and you should. You do it for sports stars, movie stars, you're going to do it for me. You're holding the hand of a debt-free child of God. Did they praise for you? Did you praise for them? Now, Bishop, I want to show you how God works. I want you to stand in the middle of the floor and face the people. You are the Archbishop, only him, no adjutants in the circle. I, I have never, if you watch me anywhere, you that know me personally, I have never ever taken a long time with offerings. Second, I don't ask folk to give till last. I don't care if they walk out. Third, I don't cuss you for not giving. But when you want good service and you have a person that serves you well, the tip should reflect their service. I don't hear no, y'all right, got quiet on that too. The tip should reflect the service. I told a member, look at me, Bishop, as your little brother, because you are my mentor. People don't believe it, but as Hear me, I don't care how high I've gone, I can't forget how it started. People forget. Look at, don't you dare sit if you're young, get up. That's why y'all can't get married, y'all sit down as women too long. I'm not playing. What you gonna do, get married and just eat and sleep? Y'all ain't gonna go to the gym together? Y'all ain't gonna walk a mile or two every day? 
I ain't staying in the house with no woman just sitting there. We married. No, no, I got to go. Where you going? Bowling. I'm gone. I'm going to try to skate. We leave in here. That's true. You taught me a lot growing up. I watch you. One thing I like about you, amongst others, but I'm going to tell you what I absolutely like, even when your haters talk about you or when they try to talk about me to you and you defend me, I appreciate that. But I like that no matter what they say about you, you took care of your family. That's a man. I don't hear nobody. I, I don't want to hear all the heat, this and that. Take care of your family. All his children are in ministry. Grandchildren love God. Wife, 50 years. What have you accomplished? You deserve much more than what you're getting, but your kind heart, my kind heart, is what ripped us off from more than what we could have had. Because every time we got something, we gave it away. You're going to get something tonight, you're going to give it away. Because that's you. I'm not. I've learned watching you what not to do. I love going home. I love not having to go preach. Mm -hmm. I love being able to say no, and November's the only month in the year that starts with N-O. Y'all miss that this is your month to practice saying no. Can I use your car? No. Practice for the rest of the month. You're going to get so used to it that you're going to see the rest of your life prospering. And it's going to prosper because you said yes too often. Hold that hand. I'm going to ask people to sow, but when I ask, I ask low because that's the way my daddy taught me. My father was the first black partner to a Jewish firm on Wall Street. You know that. I know that. Benjamin Jacobs, son and sons, he became a partner. Matter of fact, the new president to be built my daddy's office when he was in construction, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't say much because most of my prophets in the world said he was supposed to be the president, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I'm going to be one of the prophets to be like. <laughs> but he always told me, if God's got something for you, give it to you. When I went to Kojic, I wasn't supposed to get nothing. No preacher gets anything in a convocation. Look at me. Read the rest in your head. I know. Now hold hands. Because God will prepare you to get something that nobody else ever received. So I was coming to your convocation, believe it or not, without having to preach this year because you moved the dates. Because mm -hmm. normally yours and mine is the same week. Mm -hmm. Because this is not about money. It's about destiny. Look at somebody and tell them I'm going to be on time. Tell them by Thanksgiving I'm going to be debt free. Speak it or don't. And God is speaking to a situation about how to get you there. You can't do it. God has to create this. I will admit this with all humility. I don't know how long it will last. But for the past 10 years, I've been debt free, right? Probably longer. No, don't clap for me. Probably longer. Because I listened to what seasoned folk told me. Save your money, one day your money will save you. But on top of that, they say, always give God what's his. Always. Will you tell somebody, always give God what's his. So Bishop, this is the way we're going to do this. I'm going to command that those who make six figures give $80. Those who make below, we will give 40 
I am going to tell you all, look at me, to do this within a minute time. Your deliverance has a time to it. The slower, don't move yet because I see them rushing. The slower you move, the slower God responds. Y'all have got to stop playing, especially women. I love weave. I love hair. I used to own a hair sa salon. But a good bundle of weave is over two to $300, like a good one. We ain't talking about that bleach stuff that you scramble around. We're talking about like the real deal. And I'd rather you have short hair and long money than to have long hair and no money at all. Short hair coming back in style, a little sexy to me too. Girl. Short hair. Look, 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 look at people. What? Yeah. I'm going to charge you that are giving the $80 in 10 seconds to come first. We will tap him. Uh, where are the people that do the transactions? Y'all should be in place. I should not have to ask. Where are you? On both ends? All right. So we have someone on both ends. You that are giving the 80 come now. Come first and move as quick. One man gave for him and his wife. He gave 160. Do it, quickly. Do it. Come on, man. You my guy. I went to college with this guy. And he's saying, thank you. Say, help the ship get where it belongs. Look how easy you people are moving. Don't talk to the person broke. They trying to get in your good grace to find out what diner you going to. Stay here. We are giving the 80 now. I'm about to release the rest of you to give 40, especially 20 of you upstairs. You'll need to come down here, especially the woman whose license is suspended, but you're driving. I'm going to need you to give the $40. I won't embarrass people so that God can uh, so he can give you your license back. Some of y'all got to stop driving without insurance. Y'all got to stop that. All right, make way. We need a half of that aisle for other folk to walk. So let's be manageable. Thank you, let's be manageable. Those who are gonna give the 40, come now. I wanna see a great number of people in Jesus' name without any embarrassment coming. I love you, boy. I need to see a great number of people coming without, hey, apostle. All right, come on. I'm enjoying seeing y'all obey. Bishop said Cash App is not working, but cash is good. Check still work. I'm old, I carry a checkbook. Smile when you come, especially if you got a pretty set. Mary Hart doth good like a medicine. I'm serious about black people smiling. Hallelujah. Y'all got to keep walking past Bishop because he'll hug every last one of y'all for five minutes apiece. Can we thank God for Prophet Brian Mosley staying with us tonight? No, come on, put some real fervor to that. I, I know I appreciate it. I know it. I couldn't get in his service. I couldn't get in the office. I'm so happy I'm a brag. Come on. The rest of you get your best in a minute and you're gonna come. If you intentionally came with no reason of giving, please keep it. I'm not gonna curse you, but you will go through another cycle of whatever you've been going through. That's on you. 
You either prolong a thing or you make it stop. Because seed stops cycles. Will you tell somebody seed stops cycles? When a woman receives seed at the right time, she has no cycles. Seed stops cycles. All right? And that means she's pregnant. You see? You receive when the cycle stops. And your seed must be effective enough for that. Those who want to give, come now. Bring your best. Whatever it is, walk past who it is and let them know. Open this again, please, so that we have a way to walk around because they can't go to the left and right. We need the center aisle. Thank you all for coming. Play something nice over there, nephew. Yeah, y'all play something nice so Bishop can have the mic and send us home. Will y'all pray for Brother Todd Hall? I'm going to ask again, can I solicit your prayers? I need them. I want them. The woman who was on this side still mad at me for not prophesying. It's going to be well with you. You don't need details. You don't need, see I'm from Brooklyn because I'd have ran by now to drop the mic. <laughs> you don't need, you don't, you don't need details, baby. All you need is the facts. It's going to be okay. Amen. Can we all stand, and I mean standing on indifference to the primate and the prelate of the new life covenant of churches and get loud for his grace the honorable archbishop come on y'all eric figaro let's celebrate 